What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dornovate podcast, and welcome to a special episode. We have our first guest on the podcast, University of Michigan running back and NFL draft prospect, Chris Evans. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to, to uh, come on the podcast. No problem, man. Thanks for having me on. So I believe you're, you uh, were born in Indiana. Do you have a favorite team? Do you, own, do you have a team that you kind of want to go to? Uh, in the draft? Uh, I don't got a specific team. And it's pretty much whatever team on the, on the team wants to take their chances on me. But it'd be it'd be cool to, you know what I'm saying, play for my hometown, for the Colts. So. Yeah, how you feel about Carson Wentz going to the Colts? Big time right there, big time. Big time? All right, I like that. Yeah. I great, like, great I like you see. already. <laughs> I'm an <laughs> Eagles fan, so I'm sorry to see him leave, but I think you guys got a stud in, in Carson. Yeah, it's the rebuild, rebuild, we build. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. We talk about them every week, so it's cool to hear somebody who's a Colts fan, their opinion. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Uh, do you want to get out of the cold weather and uh, get out of Ann Arbor cold? Um, I mean, I've been used to it since, I mean, once you get into October, November, getting it start becoming cold, I've been used to it um, as we start um, practicing, um, like, um, when we go to a bowl game and practice in the hot and stuff, it was like, all right, it's a little too hot, a little humid. And it's kind of like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I don't really care. Whoever wants to pick me up, I'm a, I don't care if we're playing in Alaska. I, I'll be ready to play. <laughs> I love yeah, it. That's man. the spirit. I love, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Jonathan, you want to take it away? Yeah. Nice. Nice. So let's talk about high school a little bit. So you went to Ben Davis high school. A lot of notable alumni went to that school. Like, um, Chris, Chris uh, Harris, I believe, or Corey Harris. And so you played track and football in, in high school. And I'm wondering, um, you know, I did track and football in high school as well. Our coach forced everybody to do track. If you're in athletics, you got to do track. Um, so I was wondering, do you enjoy or did you enjoy doing track and football in, in high school? And why did you, why'd you just stick to football in college? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I loved um, track um big thing with the, the track and football is kind of like a hey uh it's kind of it was like kind of line down the middle the football coach really didn't want us running track he wanted us lifting weights in the weight room to get stronger for the yeah. season but um uh a few guys in my class actually took took track by the horns and and really seen the success in it and what it can do for you over time especially conditioning and, and speed wise and we, we had a real successful track um career um I got the the record in the one tens uh, nice. Once in high hurdles, uh, we won state uh, three times in the four by one. Wow! Um, I was runner up, um, runner up, uh, runner up in the long jump my senior year to my uh, to my teammate, and it was just I, I just I mean whatever the team needed, uh, you know what I'm saying we did, and from county championships to sectionals to regionals, like we kind of really, really ran. You know what I'm saying Indy when it comes to track and field, especially in my high school. Yeah, that's awesome. In, in terms of hurdles, did you just naturally get that, or did you have to take lessons to be able to? <laughs> no, nah, actually, I, I started hurdling my junior year, um, just because I was fast. Like I'm, I'm, I got the type of speed to where, uh, like my freshman and sophomore year, I would win the 60, 60 meter dash. I would win it, mm. but then when we run the hundred, by the time we get to sixty, like everybody else coming, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, it was kind of like, uh, he turned me into a hurdler, um. And I was kind of going over it funny. I wasn't, I was kind of scared because I didn't want to, I didn't see, you see a lot of videos of people hitting the hurdles, <laughs> hurdles pull up in the air, yeah. hit them <laughs> in their neck, and they start, you know what I'm saying? And they, yeah, yeah. That was, that's like the big, it was a big fear to me. So, but after going into it and, and once you get, once I got into the blocks, the other hurdlers, I was like, if we all ran a hundred, I'll beat them all. So now it's all about how fast I can get over the hurdle and stuff. So I just took, took pride in that and just, you know what I mean? Did that. And then I, my senior year, I got, I was third. I was third in um in uh at state. So wow. learned the real fast and just just took everything I knew and, and went with it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so it sounds like you really enjoyed track in high school. Did you think about running track in college as well? Or did you just more more care about football? Yeah, I did. I was just um, you know what I'm saying, is you really don't do another sport unless you like, you know what I'm saying, you got like a your spot's 100% locked in. You know what I'm saying? You the guy, 100%. Yeah. Like, you can go do whatever. You can do whatever. But, like, 
through my time to Michigan, I was always rotating or battling with somebody. So I always, I just thought, hey, man, I might as well just stay, you know what I'm saying, work out and tracks during spring ball. So you miss spring ball, you missing, missing stuff. So I just wanted to focus up on um, football. But throughout the offseason and stuff like that, yeah. I would do like different things that I like different stretches and stuff from track that I that I remember. I mean, I don't know if this is getting too specific, but I was doing some homework and it's like, I think your numbers on hurdle or max preps were like about 180 and then you're like 116. So you definitely put on some muscle going like specializing in football. Is that right? Yes, yeah, sir. Definitely. Definitely. Dang, uh, yeah, your highlights still show a good hurdling ability. Got to say it's why I wanted to talk to you about the high school. We're not going too deep here, but I saw that. And I'm like, dang, that's, that's definitely muscle there. So <laughs> props to you, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. I came in. Uh, 190, uh, 185. I played in my high school season. When I was at high school, I mainly played slot receiver. And uh, my senior year, they put me at running back. So I was mainly just a receiver. Um, And then when I went to Michigan, I mean, this past year, I played about 215 or 220. So since I've been in Michigan, it's been about, about Dang. 30, 20, 25 to 30 pounds on me. So Yeah, yeah, definitely like not an easy thing. So props to you. Yes, sir. Yeah, one thing that I noticed while watching you at Michigan and rewatching some highlights is like you said, you played the slot receiver in high school and your receiving skills out of the, out of the backfield were pretty, pretty dang good. So like, what was the transition going from slot receiver in high school? And then you played running back your senior year and then Michigan, like how did that happen that you were drafted as or brought into Michigan as a running back? Um, it was, it was a, a, a kind of a crazy story. Uh, there was as far as the running back being becoming and being a running back and I'm actually done play slot. They, they kind of uh, recruited me as an athlete, but the, yeah. the transition was, um, it was really like football. I mean, um, not football, uh, running backs always getting hit, always, always, always. they either getting hit by somebody or they got to hit somebody. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the route with the wide receiver type of deal, I mean, you're, if you're a wide receiver, you can, um, you know what I mean? It's a run play. You just, you know what I'm saying, go out there and just, you know what I mean, try to block somebody, just getting somebody away. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't yeah. even say a block, yeah. just getting somebody away. So mm -hmm. um, that transition to that is like, you know what I mean? Now the guys are bigger, the, the linebackers are bigger and stuff like that. So I had to gain weight. Um, So mm. just on my own. So that's probably the hardest transition. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And is there anybody that you watched growing up that you love to watch or any any running back or, or slot guy in the NFL that you kind of wanted to model your game after or or not really? Uh, Like a mixture of uh, like Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey, like a little mix. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what we, I, what we I love was those guys saying. here. Yeah, because <laughs> I was I was talking to those these guys about those players the other night, and I'm like, I love how out of the backfield, like they know we play fantasy football, and I never draft like guys that just like run out of the backfield. I love the guys that could catch, and I'm like, he kind of like looks like you know like a Kamara or a McCaffrey that could catch and just like shimmy around a guy. So that's awesome. Yeah, being around um, Christian McCaffrey's brother Dylan McCaffrey, like. Like those guys are those McCaffrey. Well, if if I, I haven't met Christian, but if he's, which I'm pretty sure he's wired like how Dylan is, like just mentally, mm -hmm. then he's. I, I understand why he why he is how he is. Yeah, because he's so mentally strong, and it's just he doesn't let anything get to him. So uh, that's big. Yeah. Well, I want to get into uh, your time at Michigan. So I'm personally a Michigan fan. So I've I've followed you since you came on the scene in 2016. So um, that, that 2016 year is pretty special, uh, overall, but specifically, I'm pretty sure they had like a crazy amount of freshmen play like the Hawaii game and you played and got two touchdowns. How, from like, when you got there to the campus, to the first game, how did you separate yourself to be able to get that much playing time? Uh, it was kind of, uh, when opportunity and preparation meet type of deal. Um, in, the, in the Hawaii game, uh, the starting running back, Davion Smith, had, he, he had like a rib injury or something. And uh, it was a blowout anyway. So he's like, hey, we're just going to have a freshman play. You know what I'm saying? Get the freshman in. And you know what I mean? I just did what I could. You know what I'm saying? And Hawaii, no disrespect to them. But that was – I feel like as a freshman, that's like the worst – no, I wouldn't say the worst team, but like that's a bad um, – 
team to play first because that's your expectation on college football, especially if it's your first game. Because mm. those guys were like, you know, what I mean, I, like I said, no disrespect to them, but it was kind of <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we, yeah. Play, we, we played. They're the not next like some of the other teams you faced. Yeah, the next week we played UCF uh, with with Shaquille Griffin and all them, and they were flying around knocking people's <laughs> ears off. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, this this is this is way different than last week. So yeah. <laughs> I, I was good. That's awesome. And so was that kind of your like this is welcome to division one, like was UCF or was it like you know playing any Big Ten team? Uh I mean it, initially it was UC, it was UCF. Um uh one play that I can remember vividly is the um I, I forgot his name, Shaquille or Sharif Sh- 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 or one of them. With, with the nub, he has the nub. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So, so we're on the right hash. I'm on the right side. I run a uh, like a swing route this way. It was like a screen. So like the tackle goes block the corner and the run and the receiver goes blocks the the uh, outside linebacker. So it's a, it's a walk in touchdown. This this dude Sharif uh, Shaquem Griffin. He's on the left side. He's blitzing off the left side. Mm. So he blitzes and he's running, and the quarterback throws it to me over on the right side, and he runs so fast around this way. By the time that I kissed the ball, I kind of slipped a little bit. And by the time I went went straight, he just, like, threw his helmet into my chest. And then I, I had, like, one on the ground, and I was like, like, I couldn't breathe for a second. I was oh like, my oh, gosh. my goodness. And then I'm thinking, like, I'm like, where, where did he come from? Like, what? <laughs> this was like, you look at it, the film, he came from the whole other side. Wow. That's ridiculous. He's got the sliders all the way up. He's like a yeah, man yeah. in here. <laughs> he, was, he was vicious. And that year uh, was uh, – Devin Bush was in your uh, recruiting class too, right? So he was yes, a striker. Sir. He's a really fast linebacker. S- same thing. Yeah. I got two questions. So do you have a uh, most memorable win at Michigan? And I got to know your favorite player or teammate to play with, any funniest player – uh, my the the my roommates um Kali Hudson and Josh Uche those are my we all we laugh all the time and mm. stuff like that and and the biggest the biggest win uh I don't know I had a couple oh, yeah. I had the the snow game versus Indiana I believe that was uh yeah twenty seventeen or something that was for twenty sixteen or seventeen that was a crazy one because it was just crazy amounts of snow on the field. Yeah, that was it was insane. I at my my Michigan career, I don't really remember any of the like the games, the big games that we won, because like we didn't we didn't beat Ohio and then we didn't win a bowl game. So it's kind of like all the other ones is like you just remember the losses, you know what I'm saying? So hmm. it was I feel tough. That. Yeah, I feel that man. I mean, it, as a Michigan fan in your time, I would probably say beating Michigan State, Devin Bush scraping up the the logo. Really? That was that was pretty sick. Uh, definitely a memorable yeah. one. Um, definitely. And do you ever have a nickname playing football at Michigan? Uh, mm-mm. people just call me by my initials, which is CE. That's what they just they just. Uh, I have a sports organization called the CE Stars, and CE stands for Collectively Evolving. Uh, but that's that's for them. But the, people just call me CE sometimes. So. Yeah, yeah. We actually uh, saw a little bit. I did some research on the uh, collectively evolving CE Stars. Is that where the name came from? Kind of like the play on yeah. your name, but also I know the mission for your organization is to work on the uh, spiritual, mental, and physical parts of an athlete, you know, and a, at a youth level. Um, so I think collectively evolving is a great name to kind of sum that up. And it just happens to fit in with CE, right? Yeah. At, at first it was, um, it was like, it was going to be the Chris Evans Stars, but, uh, with uh, mm-hmm. compliance and all that stuff, we had to, I had to come up oh, with something, yeah. something to make yeah. it, image and likeness thing. So, yes, wrong. yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But I saw into that. I know a little background on me. I, you know, I played football growing up, but I got into soccer as well. But I actually coached a girls soccer team. So I definitely can relate to this idea of giving back to not only the community, but the next generation. And I know on a on another podcast you talked about, you want to be a coach someday. Um as well as you talked a little bit, and we can talk more about that in a moment, but uh, you got a co- job coaching safety at the local high school, you know, special teams as well. Um, how have you seen that desire to be a coach and also improve your game play out uh, when you were coaching at the high school level and also with your organization? 
Oh, yeah, it was it was good. Um, kids in my organization, I had like maybe six kids from that um, from that high school. So mm-hmm. me coaching okay. at that school, um, it was made me real comfortable and knowing the kids and stuff and like that. With you. Yeah, yeah, and also playing running back, and you know what I'm saying you, I mean that hole opens and you get one-on-one with the safety and I'm coaching safeties. You know what I'm saying? I can yeah. tell them, I can give them that, that you perspective the, on the other side. You know what I'm saying? You learn how the defense looks at you instead of yeah. you look at the defense. It must've opened up like your vision on the field as a running back, as well as for exactly. coach. Interesting. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I bring it up too. Cause as an Eagles fan, you know, Doug Peterson was a high school coach and uh, I don't say rest in peace, but you know, he ended up winning a super bowl. So could be in your path one day for sure, either as a coach or a player. Um, what inspired you to start? Did you start this kind of, I know we talked a little bit about it, but you started this during your time as an athlete or, you know, at, during college and what inspired you to do this? Cause not, it's not like every athlete has to do this. It's kind of, to, uh, to your own merit. Like what inspired this for you? Yeah, I have, uh, I played in, I mean, I coached my, well, actually I uh, trained my little brothers and his friends, uh, uh at, you know what I'm saying? I just worked them out and just, I would work out my little brother that didn't be with him. And then, uh, like seven friends. And then I'm like, this is in my junior year of high school. Then I'm like, we might as well go play in some league somewhere. Yes. So we made a team, uh, and we called them 12 gauge because I was number 12 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so we called them 12 gauge. I was 12, number 12 in high school. And then as soon as I went to college, um, I kind of had to tell her all the kids by like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I got to go. Yeah. To blah, blah, blah. So then I went up to Michigan and started, started a team in Michigan, started to see stars in Michigan. And then I called my friend back at home and said, hey, man, we got to get the boys back together. Um, so we will meet halfway um, uh, for the first two summers. We met halfway. And like I had a team, he had a team. We have we have a cookout and I haven't played against each other. But now it's, it's done grown big to where now our kids have, scholarship offers and they're traveling around the country and it's, 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 it's getting big. That's now. great. That's so great. Not only in making opportunities for them, they probably look up to you too, in terms of uh, uh, it's cool to see you organically sort of be a leader to the next generation, as well as to the boys you did have, you know, I, I can relate to in college, you do kind of change uh, environments, change locations a lot. So to see you keep that up, that's amazing. Um, was there ever a – is there – I know you played a West Coast a little bit for most of your time in Michigan. Was there ever, like, a style that you like to to adhere to more than others? Uh, spread. You talking about, like, like play style? Yeah, yeah, in terms yeah. of your personal or as a coach. Oh, spread, definitely. I um, I love playing and spread. Everything spread out. Um, yeah. The beginning of my – I played in the West Coast. Um, I'm glad I got to be a part of the West Coast um, playbook – because when we went to this Rishi Senior Bowl, we got drilled, we got hammered on this new playbook that we had to only learn for one week. And all the other guys coming from spread and signals and no huddles, like I actually got in the huddle at Michigan and stuff like that. And like the Panthers, it was the team we was on, um, Panthers and coaching staff, We the, the their plays were literally the same exact plays of what Coach Harbaugh called them. So I was like, oh, yeah, this is easy. Everybody else is staying up to – Two yeah. o'clock in the morning studying, and I'm like, man, hey, this this is the same stuff. I, you know, what I'm saying, so yeah, that was a blessing to be able to, to do that. Yeah, that's like the back. I I remember, I remember hearing that on a on the Chargers podcast. You talked about how that was a a great advantage to already have that kind of multi discipline. Because in the last year at college, you did uh, Coach Harbaugh change it up a little bit too in terms of uh, introducing some of that other lingo. Am I right about that? Yes, sir. It was it was a little different um because it was with Josh Gaddis's offense. So okay. we just people had to get it. We we had to, I had to adjust and kind of say, hey, this this means this and this means that to be able to make sure. I yeah. Get it. Back to the the offense. I remember when Michigan switched to Josh Gaddis. Obviously, it was kind of like a play style shake up, and it was it took a lot of time to get into a rhythm with that offense. Um, with you know Shea Patterson and all the receivers. You just talk about like from the inside, you know, as a fan, we don't really know too much, but like to go from West coast to a spread, like how much goes into that? Is there a lot of work that you have to do mentally and studying, or is it, you know, changing your play style on the field? Uh, yeah. Being, being, um, in spread, you gotta be, um, your play style really has to adjust to the, to the play calling. So it's kind of like, all right, I'm gonna be put in positions where I'm in, 
I'm in, I got more space. You know what I'm saying? I might get put in this. I might get put in that. When you get into when the West Coast, you mean you got two tight ends and a fullback. You know what I mean? It really isn't. Everybody's right here. You know what I'm saying? So um, that adjustment is 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 um, huge. And also the spread, you gotta you gotta notice. So you gotta know the signal. You gotta know the name, and you gotta know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like it's kind of hard. Or like, I mean, I wasn't hard. It's just harder to catch up on um, the boards. They put the formation boards up. That's telling you where you stand, and that's telling you where you line up. And then there's another signal caller who's telling you what to do with the signal. And then you got to remember what it's called, and then run the play. And then you got then there's a read involved, two high, one high, or you know what I'm saying, over front, even front. Like it's 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 just a lot, and I, I can't imagine how much how much it is on the quarterback. So. But I'm no, I don't play quarterback, so. I want to talk about the 2019 season. You took, you know, a year off. You lost your scholarship. You had to pick up three jobs. You were doing drywall, coaching safeties, uh, delivering food, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct. Um, how did you get through that mentally and physically? Because you did earn your scholarship back in 2020. How did you stay in shape during that time? Um, I stayed in shape by... I worked out with the high school team uh, in three jobs. That's that's the only time I had uh, is to work out with those guys while I'm there. Um, I ran around with them at practice a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I was the guy in charge of let's I'm going to watch the other team's film and I'm going to draw them up on these little, I'm going to draw this up on this little paper. And just because we don't have enough guys um, to go 11 on 11, um, we're going to just, I'm just going to be, like another player, you know, I'm going to be the quarterback since I got all the plays. I'm going to tell everybody what to do, um, stuff like that. So I got to run around and got to throw the ball a little bit too. Um, and then I like, I'll run around the track out to practice. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just to, then I go back home, go to sleep and then just do redo everything, delivery, uh, drywall. And like the little sliver of time I had, I just, I had that instead of sitting here coaching, coaching in the weight room, I can just hop in and, you know I mean, do do the same thing so I can stay in shape. You know what I'm saying? I'll just coach out on the field, talk to the coach. He was all good with it. Um, they haven't won a game in like six years up until that point. So any any help, any help was needed. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah. In high school, is it true that I think in uh, 2014, y'all won the uh, state championship with the football team? Yes, sir. And, uh, so to see you kind of bring that winning mentality to an organization that hadn't had a win in six years, I mean – I think it's a great testament to your, I mean, that's a big adversity. And I don't think it, it, it's to hail. It's a credit to you that not every person who loses their scholarship gets it back. And for you to find a way to make it work, to make it happen for the love of the game and to still, you know, multiply that love in other people and other organizations has been a great thing to see. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. You know, a lot of college kids, I mean, they may not be in that situation where they have three jobs and, and all that, but, um, you know, a lot of college students, you know, they have jobs, they got classes, they may be trying to get, you know, masters or PhDs, and they're just sworn with work. What would what, what would be your advice to someone to um, try and stay like, mentally healthy through that time? Like, how did, how did you do it um, for that whole year, knowing that, you know, you lost your scholarship, it was it was a tough time for you, and then you ended up earning it back? Um. The advice I have for somebody is, man, like anybody, if any anybody would have went through the situation I did, and uh, you know what I'm saying, like I don't think a lot of people would have would have stuck it out. I went to, I kind of didn't know, I, like I didn't know at all if I was gonna get back to the school. I didn't even know if I was gonna play for Michigan again. But mm-hmm. one one thing I got is, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I mean, I just got to put your head down and work, you know what I'm saying? And then good things will come to you when you have good intentions and, and, and doing the right thing. And, you know what I'm saying? Just just keep working. I don't, I don't know. I, I really, words can't explain, like, what, you know what I'm saying, what I went through. So I really, I don't really, it just when adversity hits, like, when, as soon as adversity hits, it introduces you to yourself, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's all about, it's, it's you against you at that point. I know you were born in 97. I was born in 97. A couple of us, you know, we're all similar. We want to think about, wanted to ask you about the college experience a little bit and kind of along that uh, tone. What was maybe the biggest change you've seen in yourself 
uh, now compared to when you were leaving high school or entering college? What was something that changed in you, either as an athlete or a person that you think is uh, maybe you want to talk about? Uh, my followers went up. <laughs> <laughs> How's that, man? You got a lot of influence. Yeah, we saw the blue check. We're like, dang. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying once once I got the once I got that blue check and and stuff like that, it was just. Like and then I my my debut I had a you know what I'm saying I had a great performance. It's just like you know what I'm saying. It's a lot of attention, a lot of eyes on you at a level. Yeah, there. Right. yeah. So in high school, I got a our 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 strength coach was always he he never liked to show off these type type stuff. He never liked the okay I'm gonna pick my school I'm gonna pick a hat like he never liked stuff like that. So he he didn't want he didn't want guys tweeting. He didn't want guys doing anything. Cause you know some guys they I mean. If you tweet too much, like I mean, I mean, sooner or later it's gonna like, you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah that's kind of what he taught it. Like, you, everybody's opinionated, and and on social media, there's somebody that don't agree with you. Like, there's somebody somewhere in a basement that don't agree with you. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so uh, you know what I'm saying? He he taught us that, and just being humble and stuff like that. So, um, I just carry that through. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I do now. I don't tweet unless it's like something like helpful or doing something like that or, you know what I mean? So like you, you let your play doing the talking kind of thing. Yeah, yes, sir. And that was your high school coach teaching you that. Is that right? In yeah, high school? Yeah, definitely. Wow. And, and having, having older guys to look up to in that situation. Um, when I was a junior, we won state um, and the seniors were doing that. The top guys, like Asmar Bilal, he was, I mean, top when I, he went to the army all American game and he didn't even have a Twitter at the time. So it was like, and he just he just trusted the process and worked hard every day and and you know what I'm saying everything came to him so I just I just do that moving forward. That's great. I think uh, we don't want to take up more of your time, but I want to go into the last question for we want to want to throw at you for the uh, dorm debate is uh what's something you wish you knew four years ago that when you were starting this co- this college experience this journey as an athlete what's something you would have told yourself four years ago? I would have told myself. Uh, Everything that's gonna happen to you is, is gonna shape you to the person you are at the end of the day. Cause if I didn't have that, if I didn't have that uh suspension, like a lot of things that I know now, I wouldn't know. Like honestly, when I was in college, this might sound crazy, but Michigan did Michigan gave us three meals a day. They washed all our clothes. They uh gave us gave us our scholarship checks every month. And all that stuff. So then now I got to eat three meals a day on my own. So I'm eating like hot pockets and pizza rolls and mm. stuff like that. Then I had to do my own laundry. I ain't going to lie. I ain't, I ain't never did laundry by myself. I, ain't, I, I didn't know. I didn't know how to do it. You're not the only was, one, man. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to hit that. I messed up the washer and dryer at our house. And I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I didn't. I ain't, I ain't know. I, 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 pit, I, I just put all my clothes in at once and it was just. <laughs> And then I'm like, why am I stuff drying? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I I did that in our, one of our apartments. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, so I'm like, man, like, yeah. So then we getting, I think the scholarship checks during that time were like, eighteen hundred a month, and I'm getting like, and I'm getting two dollar tips from deliveries, and I'm like, man, what the heck? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. getting two dollar tips. I'm getting ten dollars an hour. I'm getting. Twenty five dollars an hour doing this, and, and then at the at the at the school I get like two two uh, a stipend split in half. So every every cent that I got, I was like, like I actually I've actually worked for it. You know what I'm saying? I put the miles on yeah. my car. I uh, I had the whole drywall up like on the ceiling like this while the dude like screwed it in. My shoulders was burning, and like when he gave me the money, like like that was like from my shoulders burning. You know what I'm saying? I felt it. You know what I'm saying? When they yeah. when we did the we did. Yeah. We get the check from the school. It's like, all right, I'm about to buy this, this, and this. I'm just, you know what I mean? I ain't really doing nothing yeah. playing while I'm going to school. So, yeah, I think I think that's great advice. You know, keep everybody, you know, keep positive, keep working, and take everything, everything. Be grateful for everything, and just keep working hard. You know. Yeah, there's sure. there's a quote I told the boys when we were when you're we uh, talking about your story. And it's uh, he who suffers remembers, you know, so it definitely seems like that year of adversity taught you a lot of things that maybe you wish you didn't go through, but in hindsight made you the man you are today. Yeah. 
Definitely. I want to thank you for taking the time to do this, man. Like absolute yeah. pleasure to, to meet you and to, to talk with you today. Um, you, your story is amazing. And I, I know that, you know, the NFL draft coming up, I, I know that you're going to do something special in the NFL or coaching or in the future. Um, you're just a really good guy. So I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Thanks. Yes, so much. Sir, man. Yeah, appreciate thank it. you. Good luck with everything. Thanks, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it, Chris. Uh, we're going to end out the podcast. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not following on TikTok and on Instagram, it's at Dormitory Podcast. And we will see you guys in the next episode.